This program is brought to you by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu. The 21st century is going to be marked by the best universities, such as Stanford, really tackling the big problems, the big challenges of the century. So we need facilities, buildings, uh, this brick and mortar uh, to provide us uh, the best possible way to find those solutions. All of us in the School of Engineering are incredibly excited about these four buildings that are going to be part of the SEQ. To have all in walking distance of each other, a building related to the energy environment, a building related to nanotechnology, another one with uh, bioengineering, and on top of that, the School of Engineering's main building is just incredible because that's where the solutions lie, is at the intersection of these disciplines. A thing that people maybe don't understand so much is that science is a very social sort of enterprise. Many of the episodes that really expand your way of thinking about things and sort of plant seeds for, for future work just happen by accident, that you bump into people. That sort of social environment that I think will be set up is, is extremely important to everybody. The SEQ is going to provide, for the first time at Stanford, a focal point where all the engineering disciplines are kind of together and surrounding one another. Now when the science and engineering quad gets rolling, not only will we have more people who have more skills in broader areas to be near each other, but those buildings are also going to be built beyond the building code green. On the far end of the quadrangle, you're going to have the Young and Yamazaki Environment and Energy Building. Also on the quadrangle, you'll have the Nano Center. This will connect to bioengineering and chemical engineering. Oh, well, this building is connected to that building, which is connected to that building. Many of them have tunnels or bridges in between them. Those relations are, are there spatially for a reason, so that the people can flow in between these structures, so that the ideas can flow in between these structures. And the hope at the end of the day is that new solutions will come from unexpected places and kind of percolate around campus and have unforeseen effects. The Nano Center will be made up of people who sort of look down at the details of material systems and try to understand at the very smallest scale how things work and how we can manipulate things to make them work better or in a different way. The Nano Center is really sort of an upgrade and replacement for the old Ginston Laboratory. Ginston Lab, the building, originally called the Microwave Lab, was built around 1954 when people uh, we're exploring microwave tubes. It's gone through more or less the entire uh, laser era since then with a lot of distinguished accomplishments. And now we're moving into the nano field, fabricating useful devices that are down on the atomic scale. And this demands very sophisticated machinery, total freedom from vibration. My research uh, relies very heavily on nanofabrication. Moving into the new building will uh, permit us to recruit students from even uh, uh, broader areas of disciplines, uh, including material science, chemistry, uh, probably even biology, and the close proximity to the other areas of the science and engineering quad will be also crucial for uh, probably expanding more in the bio biology and chemistry directions of our research. We don't follow the traditional university model that there are civil engineers and there are economists and there are ecologists and there's a food specialist, but we actually interact. We start out multidisciplinary, which means each group by itself puts its information on the table and then kind of looks around the room like, now what do I do with it? And when we get to know each other well and we start to learn enough about each other's fields, we can be truly synergistic. We can be interdisciplinary. We can start to solve problems that no discipline could do by itself. The design of the SEQ quad, and specifically the placement of the bioengineering building, is a great example of how Stanford is leading in a changing paradigm for engineering education and research. We're really breaking down barriers between disciplines so that engineering becomes more of a coherent discipline that can be applied in many different ways to many different problems that society faces. And in that way, I think this is going to be a trailblazing building, a trailblazing quad, and it'll help Stanford really lead the way. The preceding program is copyrighted by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu.